perhaps it's just as well we don't know. All the same. Still miss her. Did you get all that? Uh, yes, sir. The boy is going to stay at his aunt's while his parents are abroad. His father is going to Hong Kong on business. And his wife is going with him for a holiday. Right. Thank you. Sit down. Uh, that means you'll be standing down the surveillance operation. No. It means we want him watched with extra special care. I suppose this is why you've been so interested in windmills lately. Suppose so, yes. Whose idea was it in the first place? Did Miss Soames suggest it? No. Just sort of came into my head. Have a nice time. I will, don't worry. Oh, we're going to have such a good time while you're here. Here. I'm sorry. I was just exploring. I'm not doing any harm, honestly. Don't you know this is private property? I didn't think. If my father knew you were here, he'd be very cross. I'm sorry. I'll go. Have I seen you before somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> don't think so. Oh, are you interested in windmills? Yes. I may be. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say, don't you know? No. Yes. Yes, I am. Do you know much about them? Not much. Would you like me to show you around and tell you what everything is? Hmm. Thanks, I'd like that. All right, then. There are all sorts of windmills, you know. Yes, I know that. For grinding or sawing or pumping. This one was for grinding corn to make flour. It still could if you wanted it to. It's a post mill because it's built around a single wooden post. So the whole thing could be turned to suit the wind direction. When the wind turns the sails, that turns the wind shaft there. Then that turns the brake wheel. That's the brake wheel there. And the tail wheel. The cogs in it are made of apple wood. Yes. The brake wheel is what drives all the machinery. If it drives everything, why is it called the brake wheel? Because it has all the brake bend around it, silly. It's terribly important to be able to stop the sails turning. Or the sails could turn too fast. And then anything could happen. The whole mill could be smashed. The wind is a very powerful energy source. We don't make nearly enough use of it. It's not like coal or oil, or gas. It never gets used up. No. This brake wheel turns the quant. Yes. I thought you didn't know about windmills. Don't really. It's the first time I've ever been in one. Mm. Let's go down.
pulley there turns the... The governor? Yes. And that adjusts the space between the stones? Yes. Did you know millers use their sails to pass messages and to tell people things? How? What sort of things? It's all to do with the position they stop the sails in. If they're straight up and down like an addition sign, that means the miller will be back soon. But if they're in a multiplication sign like that, that means the mill's closed or the miller's away or finished for the day. Then, of course, there's the in-between positions. Yes. If the top sail's just past the vertical, that's a sign of mourning. But if it's just before the vertical, that's a sign of celebration. Yes. How did you know that? I don't know. Just did. Is your father the miller? <laughs> no, of course not, silly. There is no miller now. No. But he does look after it. We live in the old cottage over there. Yes, thanks. OK. Here we are. Would you like some pop? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Matthew? Yes? How did you know my name? You must have... Oh, no, you haven't told me, have you? No. That's funny. I just guessed it, I suppose. Yes. I bet you'll never guess mine. All right. Let's see. <laughs> no, that's silly. What? I nearly said Albert. That's a boy's name, isn't it? What's the matter? My name's Albertine. Go on. After Albert Einstein. Really? My father said he was the greatest mathematician who ever lived because he created the theory of relativity. Yes. Afraid I don't know much about that. You know, E equals MC squared. It's all to do with the equivalence of mass and energy and the speed of light. I'm not much good at maths or science. What do you like doing then? Art. That's why I'm down here. I've come to stay with my aunt. She's going to teach me about pottery and sculpture. Hmm. This is nice. What is it? Pop, I told you. We make it ourselves out of nettles. Is your aunt the lady who lives in Rose Cottage? That's right. She looks nice. I've seen her around. Don't you know her? No, we don't know many people. My father says socialising is a waste of valuable time. <laughs> what does your father do? He teaches me. What, at school you mean? No, here. Don't you go to school then? No, I told you, my father teaches me. But I'm going to university in October. University? Really? Mm, to Cambridge. They have the best facilities for research there. I'll be able to use their radio telescope. I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably go to art college, but not for a few years yet. Is this your computer? Yes. It's the best we can afford, but it's not powerful enough for me now. That'll be another thing that'll be good at Cambridge. Who's this? What's he doing here? This is Matthew, Father. Is it? Don't touch anything there. I'm sorry. Albertine, oh, what are you doing letting strangers into the house? Matthew's my friend, Father. He's staying with his aunt at Rose Cottage. I won't have people nosing around the house. I'm not nosing, sir. No. Matthew's interested in windmills, Father. Who is he? He wanted to see the mill. And did he? Yes, thank you. Good. I'd better go home. My aunt will have my supper ready. Yes, that's very good. I think perhaps those need thinning out, don't you? Yes, OK. Oh, and Luke, when you've got a moment, I'd like you to have a look at the timber on that gable. I'm sure it's going rotten. Old Joby's never been very keen on climbing ladders. I was beginning to think you'd got yourself lost. I found a windmill. Oh, that'll be Dorrit's Mill. Goodness, did you go all the way up there? Yes, it's fantastic. Oh, I don't know. It's in pretty reasonable repair, but it's only an ordinary old post mill. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean, it's my windmill. Yours? Yes, one I keep sketching. One I keep seeing pictures of in my mind. It's amazing. What a coincidence. Come on, supper's ready. You go and wash your hands and do whatever you have to do, and I'll go and dish up. Hmm. Yes, I see exactly what you mean. It does look just like Dorrit's Mill. 
Isn't that super? Perhaps you're psychic. Wouldn't that be fun? Ah, oh, now I like that. That's very good. I'm glad to see you've given the figure some weight. You're obviously seeing it in three dimensions. Good, good. I like the way you've got all the planes right. Hmm. Well, there's not much wrong with your line, young Matthew, and you've certainly got a very good eye. We'll try you on some clay modelling in the morning and see how you get on, OK? Yes, thanks. Unless you'd rather go fishing with Luke. Fishing? Well, he said he'd take you if you want to go. We've got a couple of old rods in the loft. Mm. That'd be nice. Rather do some modelling first. Well, I tell you what, why don't you spend the morning in the studio and then go fishing in the afternoon? This is supposed to be a holiday for you, after all. Yes, I'd like that. Oh, goodness. Do you know how it all works? Yes. Albertine was telling me all about it this afternoon. Albertine? Oh, yes, the mayor girl. Poor little thing. Why do you say that? That father of hers. He's a dreadful man, keeping her locked up all the time away from other children. I don't care how brilliant she is. A young girl needs the company of other children when she's growing up. Don't you think so? And he's always getting into trouble with the authorities for refusing to send her to school. <laughs> Says he can teach her better himself. They even tried to put him in prison once. Mind you, she's only 12 and she's won a scholarship to Cambridge, so I suppose he's made his point. All the same, in my book, it's just as important to be a good human being. Life is for living. Isn't that right? Oh, that's different. Trying your hand at abstracts, eh? Or is it more surrealist, perhaps? I don't know. It's just shapes. I'm getting a bit tired now, Aunt Sissy. Can I go to bed? What? Oh, yes, of course, you must be. What can I be thinking of prattling on like this? I am sorry. I don't often get anyone as interesting as you to talk to. And when I do, I tend to get carried away. You hop up to bed and we'll make an early start in the morning. Do you like your room? Yes, thanks. It's smashing. Sorry about the bars in the window. It used to be a nursery before I came here and I never bothered to take them down. Doesn't matter. Don't mind then. Night-night. Night. night. Wallop, cut, turn it over and wallop. Put it on its end and cut it again. It's called wedging. Now, you try. Wallop, that's it. Now cut it through, right through. Turn the top over and wallop it down. Put it on its end. Good, cut it through. Yes. That's good. Very good. What are you doing? Oh, Daddy, I was so bored. I know, I know. But you're not ready to start working again, not yet. Honestly. You had one of those headaches yesterday, didn't you? Daddy, I told you. It wasn't like a headache. It was a sort of sound. Of... Still a warning, though, my darling. Your brain is very precious. Very special. We mustn't take any risks. Not yet. Not now. Go and do something else. I knew they were in the attic somewhere. They're a bit ancient, I'm afraid. Oh, they look fine. Great. The rest of the tackle's in there, with some sandwiches and a bottle of lemonade. Oh, sounds terrific. Now, Matthew, don't go falling in. We don't want any more rescues, do we? No. 
Oh, hello. Aren't you? Alberty. Hello. I'm Matthew's Aunt Sissy, and this is Luke. I, I came to see Matthew. I wanted to apologise. What for? For my father yesterday. I'm sorry he was so rude to you. Was he? Well, never mind. I dare say he had a reason. You've only just caught Matthew. Oh, if you're going out... We're only going fishing. There's no rush. Luke's going to teach me. Would you like to come with us? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about catching fish. Well, neither does Matthew, do you? Don't let that worry you. Oh, all right, then. What about your father? Does he know where you are? Oh, he's out. I left him a note saying I was coming to see Matthew. Well, that's all right, then. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for taking care, right. Have a good time. Thanks. What are you reading at Oxford? What's your subject? I'm a scientist. What sort of a scientist? Well, a, a psychologist. Psychology is not really a science, is it? Not like physics or chemistry. Well, it's scientific enough for me, thank you. Uh. Albertine's going to be a scientist. She's going to Cambridge. Is she indeed? You'll have to work jolly hard to get a place there, you know. I've already got a place there. Have you? Won't you have rather a long time to wait? No, I'm going in October. This October? She's got a scholarship. She's brilliant. Well, she must be. I believe my daughter's here. Ah, oh, you must be Mr. Mayor. Yes, I am. Where is she? I'm so glad to meet you. I've been looking forward to having a little chat with you. Come in and have a cup of tea. Uh, listen, I... Do come in. I'm not going to eat you. You must forgive the state I'm in. Uh, this is not a social call. No, you came about Albertine. Lovely girl. You must be so proud of her. I understand she's won a scholarship to Cambridge. That's amazing. Please, sit down and I'll make us both a cup of tea. Uh, no, thank you, Miss... Uh... Bosworth. Miss, Matthew's my nephew. I understand you met him yesterday. Oh, yes, I believe I... He did. was fascinated by your windmill. He's made some marvellous drawings of it. You must get him to show them to you sometime. They're really very good. Uh, Miss Bosworth, I don't want to see them. And I don't want to see him hanging around my house. Why ever not? He's a lovely boy. There's not an ounce of harm in him. Just keep him away from Albertine, do you understand? You can't keep her cooped up forever, you know. She needs friends. I know what my daughter needs. I've looked after her ever since her mother left, and we manage on our own very well indeed. I'm sure you do, but a girl needs more than her father, you know. It's not fair on her. If you'll just tell me where she is. Certainly. She's gone fishing with Matthew. She what? She can't swim. She could be drowned. No, she couldn't. Matthew won a medal for swimming last year, rescued his sister. And anyway, Luke's with them. Luke? My gardener. Your gardener? Well, he's not really a gardener. He's an Oxford undergraduate. But he's a very responsible young man. You really mustn't be so overprotective. Don't lecture me. I'm trying to help you. We don't need your help. We don't need anybody's help. Rubbish. Everybody needs other people. As the poet said, no man is an island. Who was it wrote that? I don't know. And I don't want to know. I... I'm a scientist. I'm not interested in poetry. Miss Bosworth, you do not understand this situation. Albertine is a genius, and she needs to be looked after very carefully. Why being a genius? It's not like having something wrong with you, is it? No, but she's not strong, and she's been very ill. I'm sorry to hear that. What was the trouble? Brain fever. Brain fever? You mean she had a nervous breakdown through overwork? Yes, if you want to put it like that. Now, the doctor says she needs complete rest or she won't be well enough to go up to university in October. Poor little thing. You see, you've pushed her too hard and not let her have enough fun. Just tell me where she is. John Dunn. That's who wrote it. No man is an island. Now, listen, Mr. Mayor. I've been thinking. Albertine's been ill, so what she needs is some occupational therapy. 
What are you talking about? Pottery, making pots. There's nothing like working with clay to soothe the troubled mind. Now, I'm going to be teaching Matthew, so why don't you let Albertine come along too? It's very kind of you, but I can't... She's got to learn to mix with other people. Miss Bosworth, you do... And if you're worried about her being with Matthew, you needn't. He's something of a child prodigy himself. Is he? In what way? He's one of the most promising young artists in the country. He's just won the National School's Art Prize for the second year running. Has he? Hmm. So, why don't we have that cup of tea, and I'll tell you all about it. Now, let's see how you two are getting on. Are you enjoying that, Albertine? Yes, thank you. Good. Have you ever worked with clay before? <laughs> no, never. You must be a natural, then. Those shapes are all looking jolly good, aren't they, Matthew? Yes. I think Albertine's better than I am. Oh, I don't know. That's coming along nicely. I don't think you've quite got the proportions of the ears right, do you? No. They're very difficult. Never mind. Keep at it. It'll come. Jockey. What? Nothing. Where did you get that idea from? <laughs> Nowhere, really. They're just shapes. I suppose it's being a mathematician. They're all geometric shapes, aren't they? Yes, I suppose they are. Do you think I could take it home? Yes, of course you can. I'd like to show it to my father. Well, leave it where it is for now. And next time I load my kiln, I'll fire it for you. Would you? That'd be lovely. Thank you. <laughs> 